Let's stay at Augusta National Golf Club, where Ricky Fowler is back for the first time in four years. 21-year-old Tom Kim hopes to become one of the youngest Masters champions in history. Will Zalatoris is also looking for a major breakthrough, like Scotty Scheffler had here two years ago. An exciting Masters week continues. Everyone comes to the Masters with a dream and a story to tell with hopes of leaving an imprint on Augusta's history book. Inside Augusta National, there are 87 editions of excellence. Volumes of leather-bound legends that document dominance. Resilience. He got it. The return to glory. The long awaited. Once and for all for Sergio. That's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. That's what our game is all about. I can't even talk. The iconic. Last year's standard was set by John Rahm. The Spaniard outlasted the competition in a marathon Sunday to win his first green jacket. Today we turn a new page as one player looks to tell the greatest story he's ever told and will be the next Masters champion. Welcome to Masters on the Range. We are just a day away from the official start of the Masters and the course is as beautiful as ever. An iconic venue. Augusta National Golf Club is a supreme test of patience, creativity, and shot making. Players continue to line the tournament practice area, working on all aspects of the game in anticipation of a Thursday start. Hello again from Augusta, Georgia. I'm Kelly Tillman alongside the host of Course Record on CBS, Michael Breed, PGA Master Professional Brian Kroll, and Amanda Balionis talking to players all around these grounds. As we watch players ready for the 88th Masters, we are monitoring the forecast. They're calling for early thunderstorms on Thursday, followed by some hardy winds lingering into Friday. No doubt the tournament committee will have a plan to navigate this situation to get us to the weekend when the weather will be outstanding. Right now, it's business as usual at Augusta National Golf Club. It's the last day to fine tune those skills. Patrons getting a full look, a close look at the best golfers in the world. Will Zalatoris had a very close call in his Masters debut three years ago. He's with Amanda Balionis right now to look ahead to the week. Here with Will Zalatoris, obviously a runner-up finish in your debut here in 2021. You're back, you're healthy, and at the beginning of the week, we talked about it, you kicked off your week by playing a practice round with Tiger Woods. Does it get any better than that at Augusta National? No, it doesn't. I mean, uh, you know, my mom reminded me that that was actually the one-year anniversary of my first surgery, so uh, that was a pretty fun way to do it. Um, you know, he's been an idol of mine, obviously, pretty much my entire life, but he's been really helpful kind of through the rehab process. Um, you know, it was a lot of fun kind of picking his brain. You know, I, I pretty much just followed him around all day. Um, you know, probably one of the best comments he made all day was walking up 11 fairway and he said, man, it's just so peaceful here. And I was like, my Mondays are obviously a little different than yours typically. So when you got about 5,000 people walking around at about 8.30 in the morning, so, but it was pretty special. And, you know, like I said, he's been uh, incredibly generous with his, uh, with his help and his advice on uh, how to come back. 
Yeah, did you have a relationship with him before your back surgery? Because it just seems like another example of Tiger Woods really taking it upon himself to bring the young guys under his wing when he can. Yeah, you know, I, he invited me to come up to Nexus Cup, which is one of his charity events for his foundation. Um, I was only up to hitting irons, but he basically, you know, spent a little time with me on the range that day. And um, it wasn't so much of the questions that I had for him. It was more of the questions that he had for me that were very thought provoking and something that, you know, over the next few months of when I was starting to work my way up the bag to really kind of make sure that I was doing the right things. So, um, I would have loved to have seen him in his prime and see, and see the uh, the absolute killer in him, but he uh, he really opened up and it was a lot of fun to spend some time with him. Preparation-wise, I'd imagine playing alongside someone like him out here with all of those patrons, you got almost like a Saturday experience almost yeah. anywhere else. Does that help you in kind of just getting your mind right ahead of what is the most pressure-packed week of the year? Yeah, I mean, yesterday's nine holes off the front was almost like playing on Sunday out here before the patrons are allowed out. It was uh, it was pretty quiet, but yeah, it was a blast. I mean, um, you know, like I said, I pretty much followed him around on the greens. I tried to just soak, in as, soak it in as much as I could. I had never played with them before, but I'd spent some decent amount of time with them and um, you know, we had the same surgeons back in Texas. Um, and so, you know, being able to kind of talk through, um, you know, even if a doctor says it's going to take 12 weeks for recovery, you know, we're el trying to be the elite players in the world where, you know, 12 weeks for maybe someone who's going back to a desk job, but for someone who's trying to win a major, it's going to be a little bit longer. And the patient's part's really hard. But, um, you know, like I said, he's been uh, incredibly gracious to me and uh, very grateful for uh, the little input that he gave me throughout the day. You found immediate success here in 2021, and your team told me the word of the week is underdoing it. So what is that balance between preparation, having confidence in yourself, and having the amount of rest needed in order to do one better than you did in that debut? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think last year in, in particular, I think I didn't really know how really damaged my body was, and I thought that it was kind of that was my 100%, if you will, um, until finally I had the surgeries and got everything cleaned up. I knew immediately that, okay, I am I know that I'm going to be able to do this at the highest level again. And, um, you know, this week we're only playing nine holes a day, keeping it very light, not really doing a whole lot of practice. Um, you know, of course, every year there's always minute changes to the golf course, but, um, you know, take the notes that you take from every year. Maybe you see a little something new here or there, but, you um, soak it in you know i think uh coming full circle from last year knowing that i was going to be out for the rest of the year um 30 minutes for my tea time last year and then being able to come back this year is pretty special quite the perspective that you have now one year removed from that we are so happy to see you back here see you healthy thank you for the time thank you great thanks you. kelly wow great interview there are so many nuggets coming out of that interview it's hard to know where to start the conversation will zalatoris will go out some three hours ahead of tiger woods in the first round scheduled to go at 10 18 Eastern time with a pair of major champions, a master's champion in Hideki Matsuyama, the first male major champion from Japan. He did it right here. And two-time PGA champion, Justin Thomas. So a stout grouping at 10:18 on Thursday as we catch up with Zalatoris on the range and take a closer look at his skill set. I guess I'll begin with the obvious uh, as we say hello to Michael and Brian. Uh, what does this back surgery do for this already tremendous golf swing? Well, it's forced him to to alter his motion quite a bit. He he played with a tremendous amount of right side bend through his swing, a very, very late release of his elbow, uh, trail elbow angle. And what ended up happening was he, he really started doing some, some real damage to the back, which is one of the things that I think that, you know, when you start thinking about Brian, other players that have tremendous right side bend, as you can see, Will now working with um, this glove under his trail arm, that, that lat being a little bit more connected to the rib cage they're going to be paying attention to when that glove is falling out is it falling out at the right time is it falling out too early uh, but what it does help him do is now with this alteration to his swing and he's made some other changes as well he's he's taking out some of that trail uh, side bend that right side bend bc and i think that he's he seems very comfortable and confident with what he's doing and he's got his shot shape under control yeah, he's been working with 
Troy Denton, and since the back injury, they've been trying to get his backswing a little more rounded. Uh, he used to have a very famous vertical lift in the first part of that swing, and that glove under his right uh, arm helps him to stay connected just a little bit longer, gives him a feeling of swinging more around than that huge lift he used to have. And it's helping him to really decrease that side bend a little bit, because that was really what the injury was all about. That yeah, side bend was severe. And the side bend is more, and you, uh, again, a great point you, you make here because what a lot of people don't understand is how the backswing can affect the down and through swing. And so as he starts to get a little bit more rounded, he doesn't have that lift going up. And so all of a sudden it changes what he does as he starts to compress the thighs and then create the, the, the side bend. The other thing that he's done curiously with his equipment is he's gone to a shorter driver. And what he has said is, is that going to that shorter driver has also helped his effort to, to make these alterations so that that trail hip stays a little bit, a little bit more level in the back and, and down swings, and which, which is quite curious to me because you would think, well, maybe if we went longer, it would get a little bit flatter. He's gone quite the opposite, and he's had great success now with that club. And still plenty of, of ball speed, 170 miles an hour of ball speed, and probably has a little bit more than that. And I think that shorter driver, Michael, gives him the feeling of allowing his right arm to extend a little bit more. He doesn't have to get down as much and keep it flexed as long. You can see that, that lower body rotation, and then as he starts to come through, there was a period of time it looked a, a extremely similar to what Joaquin Neiman yes. uh, has done with his swing as well. Um, and it's one of the things that I think if you're Joaquin, you're probably going to pay a little attention to what's going on with Will. Um, hoping, obviously, that he doesn't have the issues that, that Will has had with his back. Ten major championship starts for this young man, just 27 years old. Six top eight finishes in that stretch. We missed him for the year that he was out because of the surgery, because he's such a force in the majors at really experience-wise a very young age. You know, I'm not sure if it's intentional, but he seems to have a career that's mirroring uh, Brooks Kepka, where... He seems to rise at these major championships, and I think it gives him better focus. When you look at his statistics, of course, he's very solid in, in most areas. The putting has always been a bit of a, a, bit of a hitch in, in his power, and we'll see. He's, he's always said, if I can get hot with the putter, I can contend any week. And that I can was, win that was week. also an issue for him, yes. Well, and then going to the long putter, and, and if you look at his statistics, it is, it, it's quite good. It doesn't necessarily look great sometimes when he makes a stroke with that, but he makes a ton of putts from inside of five feet, which is the area where a lot of people will, will get a little bit fidgety. Let's take a look at all the drives he's hit so far today with our tracing technology. And that's pretty consistent. So you like what you're seeing right now from Will Zalatoris. The drill, I know the glove uh, under the arm, we're not getting the true look at freestyle, but still, you like what you see. Plenty of ball speed there, Brian, 172. His ball striking is never an issue. This is what, what got him, um, you know, his success was his ability to get from the tee to the green. It was on the green where he had some struggles, but the long putter has, has really paid off for him, and I expect him to have a, a, a good week. Well, we will see if he can feast on some birdies this week at Augusta National Golf Club. And on the subject of tasty feasts, this was the dinner menu for the Champions Dinner last evening at Augusta National Golf Club, a wonderful tradition, the best reservation in sports. John Rahm hosting and a wonderful smattering, a wonderful smorgasbord, and so delicately prepared by the staff and really a sight to behold on all levels, including the people in the room, not the least of which are the champions in the room. Uh, Chairman Fred Ridley in attendance. Uh, just to his left, the great Jack Nicklaus, the all-time winning Masters champion, the all-time winning major champion. Tiger Woods just left of center alongside Bernhard Langer. And Jordan Spieth to his right. And uh, Trevor Immelman just in front of him. What a room. Stories that were told. John Rahm said he was going to wing it a little bit and speak from the heart, but he did have one thing prepared to show the room and read to the room. The letter from Ben Hogan dated March 31st, 1952. The conception, if you will, of this champion's dinner. 
Dear Cliff, Mr. Hogan wrote, I wish to invite you to attend a stag dinner at the Augusta National on Friday evening, April 4th at 7.15 p.m. It's my wish to invite all the Masters champions who are going to be here, plus Bob Jones and Cliff Roberts. The latter has agreed to make available his room for the dinner party, and I hope you can be on hand promptly at 7.15 p.m. My only stipulation is that you wear your green coat, now known as the green jacket. Just a reminder of how this tradition began and how fortunate they all are to be in that room and to be able to call themselves a Masters champion. They worked so hard to get there. Brian, uh, we track it all week long. We, our show begins on Monday, which is more of a social day where there's a lot of meet and greet, but still work being done. Tuesday, as Michael has donned it, is, is the hardworking day where you're really just airing it all out technically. A lot of track man, a lot of this and a lot of that. Today is about focus and becoming one with your mind and everything you have to bring to the table. Yeah, the focus clearly tightens throughout the week. And I think by today, players are really just fine tuning and cementing what it is they're, they've been working on for the previous few days here. But ultimately, there could be a little change in their typical routine, knowing that the weather is coming in tomorrow. And they might want to get a little extra work in today that they had planned on for tomorrow morning. Tomorrow looks like uh, we're going to have to be very, very patient with Mother Nature. As we watch the defending champion, John Rahm, uh, live in our coverage window here, uh, he is all smiles after a, a good meal and some good stories told last evening. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise that Ben Crenshaw did a wonderful job of motivating the champions, uh, recalling stories of the late Jack Burke Jr., who won his master's title in the 50s. And, uh, of course, he told stories of Seve Ballesteros, uh, who is dearly missed. Uh, his birthday yesterday, April 9th, we always remember him this week for many reasons. And that was the day that uh, John Rahm donned his green jacket on April 9th. It was also the day that Sergio Garcia broke through to win a green jacket in the only major championship of his career, April 9th. So a lot of synergy between these Spaniards and their hero, Seve Ballesteros. John Rahm said it does feel different, Michael, coming back as a defending champion. The duties are a little bit different, and the way the patrons uh, meet and greet you is a little bit different, so much more reverence, and now that he is a Masters champion. I think that it's not too big a moment, though, for him. As you see John go over to the bag with Dave Phillips, uh, his coach right there in the, in the black hat, uh, a, an extremely talented um, coach. I, I think, I think for John, this is an emotional week for him anyway, coming back here, right? And so all those responsibilities that you have are heightened. And knowing John, he wants it to be perfect. He wanted to make sure he had the perfect menu. And he, he, I mean, all of it is, is all scripted out. I want to go back to something else that you, you made a, a, a point about what Wednesday will be like. Don't forget, you've got the par three contest that is taking place this afternoon. And to that end, many of the players now, well, I would say all of the players have been out on the golf course on Monday and Tuesday. They've gotten a feel of what the golf course is going to look like. They might be making alterations to equipment. I might need to have, yeah, you know what? We, we should put um, a two wood in the bag off the tee that I can turn a little bit more right to left as Cam Young has has done or maybe uh, throw the toe in the ground for the driver so that I can hit a fade a little bit easier. Brian, y you talked with David Young, his uh, his father yesterday, but a lot of players are going through that and then also to assessing the golf course itself. What is it going to play like? What do I what's going to be the advantage? What's the shot that I need to to work on in order for me to feel like I've got the best chance? Um, certainly short game is going to be a big part of it. Without question. And one of the other equipment changes that I heard from David Young, Cam's dad, as we're watching John Rahm here, and his incredible touch was you'd think they all get new wedges for this week, but Cam reminded us that he doesn't want an, a new wedge. He wants a wedge that's worn in just enough for him to control the spin the way he wants to control it. Sometimes getting brand new equipment with sharp grooves right before an event adds so much spin and they lose control of what they've expected with the with the ball's performance once it hits. So uh, interesting to hear from Cam that he's got new wedges, but they're used just enough for me to know how they react. Rom now 29 years old. With his lifetime invitation as the 2023 Masters champion, it was his second career major victory. You remember, he won the 2021 US Open at Torrey Pines to break through for his first major 
ultimately becoming a number one golfer in the world. He is the fourth Masters champion from Spain. We mentioned Sergio Garcia and the late Sebi Ballesteros, also uh, a two-time champion, and Jose Maria Olifabel in 94 and 99. Through the years, this champion's dinner is always a sight to behold. There's the young Sevy with Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson and Gary Player. The smiles, the stories, the legends in the room. Our coverage is just beginning. Keep it right here. <laughs>